Glads and lassies at top of the morning to you. I'm delighted to be greeting you from my house today. I wish I was at school with you, but I'm not because we're socially distancing ourselves. Um, but hi, it's Miss Whitman. It's St. Patrick's Day. And I wish that I was with you because if I was, if we were in school today, I would have made you a delicious slice of my homemade Irish soda bread. Check it out. Ooh la la. Um, there were three pieces on this plate, but now there's one. So um, that means I ate some a lot. Um, and I, it also means that I've attempted to make this intro video <laughs> several times and failed. Um, but I, I would have loved to have brought in some homemade Irish soda bread for you guys. And maybe when we see each other again, I'll make that happen. I'm also drinking my Irish breakfast tea in my Treat Yourself mug. Um, and I heavily over brewed it, so it's real strong. So I'm feeling real morning wake up. Um, but I, had we been in school today, I had a whole fun plan that I wanted us to do. We were going to take a break from our essays for the day, and we were going to learn about a type of poetry called the Limerick. The Limerick is often associated with Ireland because there is a city in Ireland called Limerick. Um, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what a Limerick is and how to identify one and how to write one. And if you are feeling like, boom, I got this, and you want to write a Limerick and email it to me, um, that'd be awesome. And I will promise to write you back an email in which I write a limerick about you. Um, unless I don't know you, and then I will fake it till I make it, but it might not actually be true. Um, but my students, I know you. So if you write me a limerick and email it to me, I will email you back a limerick about you. So I'm excited to share this with you. I'm sorry that we're not together in person to do it, but we will just make like the Irish and smile and be joyful and uh, do what we can with where we are. So. Ready, set, here we go! All right, lovely people, here we go. Let's learn about limericks. Look at that cute little leprechaun. Don't you just want to be his friend? I do. Um, so today we're going to learn about limericks, what they are, and how they work. Um, so we're going to learn about what a limerick is, a fun and unique form of poetry, and we're also going to understand how a limerick is formed and be able to write our own limericks. That's our goal for today. So Limerick, as I mentioned earlier, is a place in Ireland. So this is a little map of, um, of the Limerick region of Ireland. So you see it says Limerick here, but then it also says Limerick down here. So Limerick is both um, like a region and also a city. Um, it's a city known for a big musical culture. So a lot of people who go there get involved in musical pursuits, live music, things like that. I've never been there, but one day I will go. Um, hopefully you will. So here's the form of a Limerick. And limericks are, first of all, they're always five lines long, so they're kind of short and sweet. And usually lines one, two, and five all rhyme, and then lines three and four rhyme separately. They're what's called a couplet. So when you have two lines that rhyme right after each other, that's called a couplet. So if we were to describe the rhyme scheme of this, when we talk about rhyme scheme, we're talking about like, like kind of like the code for how a poem rhymes. And so the first line of a poem would always be labeled line A. So if I said, um, gosh, there once, um, there once was an oyster whose story I tell. If that was the first line, I would call that line A. And then you go to line, the second line, and see what that one is. And for example, in that poem, there once was an oyster whose story I tell, who found that some sand had got into his shell. So when I hear those two lines, I realize that tell and shell are rhyming. So I would call that second line also A. And then I go to the next line. It was only a grain, and grain doesn't rhyme with tell and shell. So the third line I would title as B. So this is kind of complicated for this little lesson, but basically every poem that rhymes typically has some kind of a rhyme scheme. And so a sonnet has A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. That's complicated. That's another day. But limericks have a pretty simple rhyme scheme. It goes A, A, B, B, A. So if that makes no sense, you can just remember that lines one, two, and five rhyme, and lines three and four rhyme. But if it does make sense, it's an easy way to remember the rhyme scheme, A, A, B, B, A. All right, so the meter of a limerick basically has to do with kind of the rhythm when you're hearing the poem, how many beats per line, um, kind of the way the, the line sounds when you say it out loud. So if we were to clap out the rhythm of a limerick, it would sound something like this. Da 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 da
Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. That's actually a limerick. So once you start getting that pattern in your head, it'll be easier for you to come up with fun lines to make your limerick. There once was a man named Joe. There once was a man from Algiers. There once was a flower named Sue. A flower named Sue, obviously, um, a real thing. So when you're listening, you want to hear that rhythm. Da 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 It almost sounds like a nursery rhyme. And it, in a way, kind of is. So when you think about it, you don't want to overcomplicate it. Just think about, can you clap it out? Does it sound like it makes sense? Here are some samples. Let's see if we can clap this one out. There once was an ape in a zoo who looked out through the bars and saw you. Do you think it's fair to give poor apes a scare? I think it's a mean thing to do. So this fits into the rhythm. Do you have the rhyme scheme? Let's look. Does the first line rhyme with the second line and the fifth line? I see zoo and you and do. They do. And then do the third and fourth line rhyme, fair and scare. They do. The other thing to notice is that limericks can be serious, but most of the time they're a little bit more goofy and silly. So you can see this is kind of funny. It's making fun of how we sometimes, we sometimes scare the animals at the zoo more than they scare us. Let's take a look at another example. There once were two backcountry geezers who got porcupine quills up their sneezers. They sat beak to beak for more than a week working over each other with tweezers. So let's do our test. Geezers, sneezers, and tweezers all rhyme. So that fits the rules of one lines one, two, and five rhyming. Lines three and four, beak and weak, those rhyme. Does it fit the rhythm? Yeah, it does. Sometimes there's a little bit of flexibility with the rhythm, like this one. There once were two backcountry geezers who got porcupine quills up their sneezers. Sometimes you can add in a little word here and there and it still kind of fits. But for the most part, you want it to feel kind of rhythmic so it doesn't feel stuck for the right for the listener. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to suggest you try and write one of your own. But before you do it, I'm going to show you some that my students in past years have written. Now, normally as a class, we would write one together, but we're not in the same place right now, obviously. So you'll have to work on it on your own. But let me show you some ones that my students have come up with before. I warn you, they're pretty ridiculous. So this is from my period A and E students from 2015, many years ago. These students are actually, I think now they would be high school seniors, which is crazy. So actually, there's a high schooler named Kevin who's really good at track. You might know him. This is a poem we wrote about him. So his class decided to make Kevin the subject of our poem. There once was a young lad named Kevin who hung out at the 7-Eleven. He drank six big Slurpees, then tried to do burpees. He died and went straight up to heaven. So obviously silly, but does it meet the rhyme scheme? Yes. Does it meet the rhythm requirements? Yes, it does. So this is a good limerick. How about this one? There once was a cannibal, Craig, who decided to eat his own leg. He hopped all around and fell on the ground until suddenly he laid an egg. So that one's extra goofy, um, but also kind of fun. So those were another class that I had in 2015. Here's another one. There once was a girl named Danielle who worked at the new Taco Bell. She ate so many beans that she busted her jeans, but luckily her farts didn't smell. Well, that's gross. Um, that was my period D and G students. Wish I could remember who they were so I could send this to them when they're graduating. Um, but again, it works. It meets the, the rhyme scheme. We've got beans and jeans for lines three and four. Danielle, Taco Bell, smell, those rhyme lines one, two, and five. It meets the rhythm. We're good to go. Here's another one. There once was a dumb little monkey who looked just a little bit chunky. He made a friend, Bob, who was quite a slob, and together the two smelled quite funky. Ew, also gross. All right, let me show you another one. This might be my favorite. Oh yes, this is a good one. Um, this is from 2018. So this is a student named Scott who we taught and has, he decided to become the class victim and let us write our uh, limerick about him. So here's what we wrote. There once was a fellow named Scott who decided to eat all his snot. It came out his ears and brought him to tears. He, did, he does weird things like that a lot. So again, ew, disgusting, but also kind of funny. Here's another one. There once was a squirrel named Billy who loved a nice warm bowl of chili. He ate it so fast it gave him bad gas and his girlfriend escaped off to Philly. So this one is, it's good and it works, but it does, the words fast and gas don't exactly rhyme. They're kind of close, but not quite. You can do that, but I do think it helps when you make them really rhyme well, like Billy, Chili, and Philly. 
So those are some Limerick samples for you to see. Hopefully you have a better idea of what a Limerick is, that it meets that rhyme scheme and that rhythm. And if you feel like you want to try and write one, send me an email, write me a Limerick. And I, like I said, like I promised, I will write you one back all about you. Have a great day. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day. And if you're not watching this on St. Patrick's Day, that's okay. We can pretend, wear some green, spread some love in the world, and have a fabulous afternoon.